Hello and welcome to another Midnight Showings. As always, I'm Kelly. Didn't get anyone else to go with me again, so, oh well. I just got out of Interstellar. And, oh my god, as you can tell, I'm not doing this in my car. I'm doing this inside of the theater still, because I just sat through three hours and I don't feel like sitting down anymore. At least not until I get to my next movie. I mean, good God, wow. That movie is... The non-spoiler version, Interstellar, is either the smartest dumb movie I have ever seen, or it is the dumbest smart movie I've ever seen. And for all those sci-fi nerds, name the reference. Yeah, this movie is filled with sci-fi references, ranging from 2001 A Space Odyssey to Lost in Space. <laughs> and it was a ride. Oh, wow. The visuals alone are merit a ticket inside of the theaters. This is not for the fan of heart, though. Not because of any graphic things, but because this one makes you think the whole movie. And I do mean that when they say that Interstellar is something that you are going to be chewing on in the back of your mind for a very, very long time. I mean, they go from interstellar travel, theor relative, uh, theory of relativity, which is proven a fact by this movie, and <laughs> time travel, interdimensional time-space warping, to just some Doctor Who paradoxical stuff that even he would call bullshit at. I mean, the Doctor would call so much bullshit on 90% of what happens in this film, and that's saying something considering the science of Doctor Who. And this movie doesn't make it easy on you. As I said, if you are not highly intellectual, if you don't like thinking in your films, if you like being spoofed and stuff, this is not for you. This movie is for those who are willing to sit down and analyze it. And of those people, half of them will hate this. Half of them will love it. And I can understand why. Me personally, I actually kind of enjoyed it. There's an entire hour's worth of material that didn't need to be there, but I still enjoyed it. So, non-spoiler version recommendation, go see it in theaters. It is definitely worth a watch just from the visuals alone when they get to the wormhole and the black hole especially i mean cgi marvels see that sucker in in imax if you can see that in just 3d d box imax awesomeness i mean that shit deserves 4k at least if you're ever going to watch it at home i mean it was just wow so, yeah, there's my recommendation for those who don't want to save the spoilers. The spoiler section, <laughs> this is going to get extensive, guys. Um, yeah, so the plot of the movie basically states that Earth has been overpopulated. And a real problem that society does technically face. Uh, there's just not enough food for everybody. And apparently a war broke out, governments fell, and... New ones took over. Again, it's one of those stories where you think that they should show something to lead you to this, but they don't. They just tell it to you. And a lot of this, a lot of this is just talking. So much goddamn talking. I mean, I'm, I'm all for discussions, but I'm not a fan of the Nolan uh, Shyamalan pretentiousness. Let's talk about the big, how important everything is. It's about the survival of the human race. And I need to tell you in the slowest and most mundane way possible, because my name is Matthew McConaughey. Yeah, there's a problem. There's a problem with the film. But back to the synopsis. Basically, the governments that are there have reformulated and they are fixed the food problem for the most part. They forced everyone to become a farmer. Yes, most everyone in this movie is a farmer. Think about that. 
even the NASA trained space pilot who oh god it's just Matthew McConaughey's character he is a farmer by force he was a space he was a pilot for NASA as I said and he has basically been forced to be a farmer and he hates it and he does not mind showing you. He's trying to raise his two kids after his wife died from get the bitch out of the movie-itis and he lives there with their grandpa who also helps him farm. Periodically they encounter dust clouds that uh, kill crops and can kill people if they're not careful. Most people have to have masks on them at all times. They can't even uh, get outside for very long. They, ha they have to hurry and get home and board up and lock everything because it's apparently a regular event that can be timed out or else their house gets buried and stuff. There's dust and sand everywhere no matter what you're doing or how you live your life. And this is one of the better parts of the film. This first uh, third, I'll admit there's a lot of talking, but I didn't really mind it until about the two hour mark. And this first third is just so well done at establishing the setting as well as the thoughts and feelings of everyone a part of this world. You understand that Matthew McConaughey is not happy. You understand that his kids don't really see eye to eye with him. You understand everything except for this weird ghost angle that they're pulling out that the little girl has sees ghosts in her room and they end up telling her messages in Morse code and binary code as they later discover in the film and yes we're in a film about science fiction right right they actually tie this in very very well in the last third but that's a spoiler that I don't want to give away at least yet well, after reading the messages Matthew McConaughey after not believing his daughter for the first <laughs> half of the third uh, first third, they finally discover a set of coordinates telling them in binary code. So they send, so they go to the coordinates and what do they find? NASA! Yes, NASA. I almost want to say NASADA and I was expecting Zordon to pop out and tell the rangers to go to space, find Andros and fight the evil machine empire again. But no, no, no. They actually land in NASA, the most the worst, best kept secret in the world, apparently, because they found it and there's a fence around it. Okay. They get there and they want Cooper, being that he's the better pilot of everyone they've been training to do this mission for years, decades even. He's better than all of them. He didn't want him to pilot it after discovering this. So he has to leave his house. Uh, he has to leave his family to go. And even the messages are telling him to stay. But he decides to go into space. And probably one of the best transition shots I've ever seen in a film. You just get uh, Matthew McConaughey driving away, cr crying, because I guess his Botox fell out. And then the next shot is them taking off in the spaceship. And th this movie is loud. Very, very loud. I mean, Hans Zimmer does the music, and he doesn't just do bwoms this time. He does noise on his piano. A lot. So, I'm sitting here with my head going like this because it's so freaking loud I'm gonna pop my eardrums on this surround system that we got in this theater kudos Sydney mate and thank them uh, quick shout out to those at Sydney mate Let, thank them for letting me do this right here I know that someone walking in with a camera saying I want to record a video <laughs> inside of a movie theater is a pretty dumb idea but they let me do it anyway so thumbs up for you but going on, he goes into space, and that's when the real shit happens. And they go to the, they 
talk about all the ins and outs of interstellar travel as we know them, how we'd have to develop some kind of hypersleep, uh, because there's only so fast they can go inside of space at any given time. It takes eight months to get to, s to Mars, two years to get to Jupiter and to the wormhole that they need to go to. And as I said, the wormhole is just CGI brilliance. And although the explanation of how it looks is a little... I could call bullshit on just as much of the science as Doctor Who would. And that is the truth. You know what they've got? The sonic screwdriver. Yeah, I think I left mine out in my car. <laughs> I'm not going to do that to you. But then they start going through the wormhole and they go to the planets that they are going to repopulate because Earth is basically dying. The generation, uh, Cooper's generation, which is the name of Matthew McConaughey's character, his kids are going to be the quote unquote last generation to survive on Earth because the dust clouds are going to suff either suffocate people or there's not going to be enough food because the genes inside of, just like uh, incest would inside of uh, hum humans uh, mating and pollinating plants with everything else has basically turned it, all of our plants infertile and make them unable to grow. Genetic diversity at work. But uh, so that's when all the shit happens and the planets aren't that creative it's really weird because everything in space the wormhole the uh, are very very creative but the planets you have a water level you have an ice level you have a rock level and the rock level you don't even get to see much of and this is where the worst part is. and this is basically the first third maybe a little bit more of the movie then you get to Mr. Man. The entire time this movie keeps praising the people who went on the mission first and the, mo the scientists who led the exposition. And I, his name is uh, Professor Man. I call him Mr. Man because this guy is not that intelligent. It's played by Matt Damon. Matt fucking Damon. God, why is it that everything that he touches turns to crap these days? I want to be Lazier. You know, the stupid oil rig crap. Even the last Bourne movies. I mean, has that man made a good movie in the last ten years? At all? Or start in anything that was any decent? <sighs> but yeah, he's no different here. And it turns into an this movie that is a relatively well thought out although kind of disjointed sci-fi story and pure sci-fi, not sci-fi fantasy or uh, science fiction uh, or something else. No, it's pure sci-fi, taking uh, everything we know today, theories, and basically putting them into practice and then filling in the gaps with maybe plot convenience stuff here and there. But it's relatively all well done. You get to the next third of the movie, which deals with his planet and oh god the ice world <sighs> you know you thought the water temple you thought the water world would be bad you know being that it's basically a water temple no 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 it's the ice planet and it turns into an action film this is he's basically gone crazy after being alone in hypersleep for so long the planet's not good enough for survival, but he gave him the thumbs up and his uh, transmitter beacon so that someone would come save him. Complete douchebag. He leads uh, Matthew McConaughey out and gets in a fight with him, breaking his his mask uh, so they can so he can steal his ship, finish the mission, but be alive to survive it. Yeah, it was dumb, and he ends up killing himself because he won't listen to reason because he's in such a hurry that he doesn't realize that improperly docking and opening an airlock is going to cause your ship to go kablooey. I mean, ugh. And then you get into the last third, which is, again, really good, where they basically tie everything together. The ghosts in the room, the, uh, uh, the wormhole leading to these other planets, the information, the I mean, it's just, everything just makes so much sense here. And you might be hearing the music. This is the music to Interstellar, because there's actually three showings going on at once because of how much this movie is questioning how we 
perceive science fiction. Not just uh, science in general, but just fiction in general. On a storytelling basis, this is both one of the best and uh, worst films I've ever seen. Again, that entire third can be removed from the film. But the, the rest of it flows consistently as a good narrative, even with the pretentious, we have to save the world, we cannot speak with contractions talk that they do throughout the whole movie. And that's probably this movie's greatest and most brightest standpoint is the general idea and aesthetic of everything it's doing. I'm not going to say that this was very, this was done perfectly though. As I said, a lot of the science mumbo jumbo that they are coming up with is such utter bullshit that I could, I could write ten papers on how this doesn't make any sense. And going along, there's a lot of Doctor Who logic in this relatively gritty, serious uh, uh, film. And I know I'm deferring from my usual good and the bad, but this movie is an interp needs to be interpreted. It can't be thought as good or bad. This movie lies in gray. There are things that it does well, and there are things that it doesn't do well. But neither one of those makes them good or bad. It's all completely 100% situational. And if you cut that entire middle third with Matt Damon's character and the ice world out of the picture, nobody would be questioning whether or not this was a good movie. The two big complaints of this film are length and that fucking ice planet. <laughs> length and the ice planet would both be solved if you cut those from the movie. Everything else it's just better. I mean, it's filled with references to every single science fiction before I mentioned them before, but they have their own sassy robot, and they draw attention to it by literally drop, uh, dropping a very, very clever reference to Lost in Space that, for being one of the youngest people that was inside of my showing, I'm basically the only one who got that reference. I know, right? <laughs> but... There are so many others. I mean, the gravity worlds, the way that gravity works in this um, film is just so brilliantly done and shown. The visuals of the wormhole, as well as Matthew McConaughey's time travel area, if you get to it, are just so beautiful and thought out and detailed that I can't say that any of it was bad. Hell, even Matt Damon's Ice World, although it was kind of bland and just there to throw action and suspense into the film, I can't help but think that that was still better than most. And I'm getting weird looks from people walking out of another showing of this film. And I can't... There was not any actor who did a bad job. Matt Damon didn't do a bad job in this, although the, some of the crap that he spouts off while he's trying to kill Matthew McConaughey is laughable at best. And why did he rig his robot to explode? Was he planning on killing everyone? I mean, he could have just said that Matthew McConaughey fell down well and turns out that the planet's not sa as safe as he thought. Things changed in his hypersleep, I don't know. And he could have just taken him back to the planet then. It, there's so many little ins and outs that would have been fixed here. And it doesn't make sense. In the th last one, in the last third, where everything comes full circle and gets resolved, it, it's Doctor Who logic. The paradox is not. The paradoxes will resolve themselves. And that's what this movie does. There's way too much plot convenience on here, and by God, Nolan, it's okay not to have a happy ending. You don't need Matthew McConaughey to go and save uh, the pram girl who's in another galaxy. You don't need this. It doesn't fit with the rest of the film. I mean, NASA, your security sucks. You build your secret base with a fence around it and no guards, and then you let a 
a guy who's literally a hundred years behind the times steal your ship, steal one of your ships that you could have just asked for to go off and save this girl. I, it's okay not to have a happy ending. It's okay to say that she didn't get it. Or better yet, when you cut to show her burying her uh, supposed lover when she gets to the other to the last world, why why not have him survive? Why not give them their happy ending? Let Matthew McConaughey fly off into the distance, or stay there and try to look for uh, look into hum the human future, going where they are, not where they've been. You know, with progressive talk and all that other jazz. But there's so many. There's a lot of things in this movie that don't make sense. But there's a lot of things that do make sense. And it does, it puts out ideas about God, uh, manifest destiny, uh, time travel, you know, interstellar flight, quantum mechanics, the way we perceive everything. Everything about this movie is so much more than it seems. And it really does need an analysis, which is why final verdict, go see this film. You need to, if, if you're any kind of intellectual, you need to see this film and decide for yourself whether you think it was good or not. If you're not the casual fan, if you're not, if you're just the casual moviegoer, if you're the kind of person who doesn't want to use their brain, you just want explosions on the scene, or you want to be spoon-fed a romance because I'm literally looking at the best of me, I'll take a shot of that and I'll cut to it without cutting out the sound right here just so you guys know but if you want something stupid that's just meant to entertain you this is not for you this is not meant as a work of entertainment this is meant as a uh, a work of study and in many ways you can consider an art piece especially with the CGI used so as I said it's not going to be for everybody but if you want something more intelligent. If you want something that pushes the bounds of what you consider good filmmaking, or pushing the bounds of what you consider good storytelling, go see Interstellar. But first go see Big Hero 6, because that movie was freaking awesome. As always, I'm Kelly. See you all next time. I told you I would show a shot of that.